Hey, this is Chad Nelson, the CEO of the Surfrider Foundation. Welcome to this episode of The Current, where we're going to focus on Surfrider's work to protect clean water. Today, I'm joined by Mara Diaz, Surfrider's clean water expert. Welcome, Mara. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Since Surfrider's founding almost 37 years ago, we've been fighting for clean water at our local beaches. Ever since, water quality has remained one of our top priorities and has resulted in some of our biggest wins whether it was stopping pulp mills from polluting Humboldt in the early 90s uh, to a big Clean Water Act when we took all the way to the Supreme Court and won last year. Every day, our national network of volunteers, chapters, and clubs are working to protect water quality and reduce pollution so that it's safe to surf, swim, or play in the ocean. Mara, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Surfrider's overall general strategy to protect clean water. Yeah, sure. We have our clean water programs, which our chapters run to give volunteers real hands-on opportunities to engage in protecting local water quality. And we also have our campaigns that we run at the local, state, and federal level to really protect water quality and to solve water pollution problems. Yeah, great. It's sort of a one-two punch. And maybe let's dive into the clean water programs a little bit. You can tell us about the Blue Water Task Force and also our Ocean Friendly Gardens program. Sure, our Blue Water Task Force is our volunteer-run water quality monitoring program. And our chapters are using this to really fill in the gaps of the agency testing programs, either testing where they're not testing or testing year-round where the governments are really only able to test during the beach summer season. We use this program to really engage people to be aware of where the water quality issues are locally so that we can pull together the right officials to solve those problems. Our Ocean Friendly Gardens program is our sustainable landscaping program, and we use this to really give people um, natural solutions that they can implement right in their own yards. Ocean Friendly Gardens can absorb rainwater and runoff and let it soak into the ground, and it really reduces the amount of polluted runoff that gets into our oceans locally. Ocean Friendly Gardens also provide native habitat that is really critical for making our coasts more resilient in the face of climate change. So two great programs. You can roll up your sleeves and actually go out and like collect water samples and analyze the results or, or get involved in uh, your own gardens or community gardens to solve the problem. And these, these programs are taking place all across the country, which is really great. Uh, Surfighter also has a long history of advocating for clean water and uh, we've launched a new campaign to stop sewage pollution. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about why that's relevant and important, and then we can dive into sort of what we're actually going to do about it. Yeah, poorly treated wastewater and sewage spills are a real problem at the coast, discharging untreated sewage into our waterways. And it's really dangerous for people to come into contact with contaminated water that has sewage in it because it can cause all sorts of common ailments like eye, ear, and throat infections, rashes, stomach flus and hard to treat skin infections. It can also cause some more severe yet rare incidents of things like hepatitis A. So we wanna make sure there's no sewage in the water and that it's clean for us to be in. But unfortunately, our wastewater infrastructure is really old in a lot of communities, even close to 100 years. And these pipes are underground, out of sight and usually out of mind so they haven't been maintained properly and this has caused all sorts of failures to occur and sewage spills that we hear about way too often. We also have a lot of communities that are not even attached to sewers yet but rely on individual systems like septic systems and cesspools that never really adequately treat our wastewater before discharging it into groundwater or into local waterways. Um, this has really resulted in over 900 billion gallons of wastewater and raw sewage being discharged into our waterways every single year. Yeah, so it's something we really don't like to think about until it's a problem. But when it is a problem, it sounds like it, you know, can cause us serious threats to human health. And we know it also affects, uh, you know, health of our marine ecosystems. Beyond that, why is this an issue that we think is really important to address which sort of when we look at it, it nationally? Obviously, beyond that sort of health and environmental effects, there's also some pretty serious uh, economic implications to uh, all of these sewer spills. Sure. Well, clean water and healthy beaches really drive coastal tourism and recreation industries that are worth over $130 billion nationwide and provide two and a half million jobs for Americans. 
So if, if we don't protect our water quality and people start getting sick at the beach, then public confidence in safe beaches is going to decline. And that's really going to jeopardize those really high value tourism economies that our coast has. So it sounds like tackling this sewage pollution problem is good to protect public health. It's going to protect ocean health and it's going to protect this thriving ocean and coastal tourism economy. Uh, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what Surfrider is actually doing to tackle this problem. Sure. Well, first we're advocating for robust water quality monitoring programs through the Beach Act, which provides funding to coastal states so they can run those programs and notify the public if there's pollution in the water so they can take action to stay safe. We also have our Blue Water Task Force program, which is filling in the gaps of the Beach Act funded government programs to provide even more information to coastal communities. When we find problems, we leverage our Blue Water Task Force data and our local partners so that we can bring together the stakeholders that are needed to find the sources of pollution and to fix them. Chad, do you want to talk about our federal priorities to stop sewage pollution? Sure. Thanks, Mara. You know, earlier you talked about how we advocate at the local, at the state and the federal level. And we sort of have two primary priorities at the federal level that will tackle this sewage pollution problem and also just generally help clean water at our coasts. The first is that we're advocating for $10 million in funding for something called the EPA Beach Act Grants Program. The Beach Act is something that the Surfrider Foundation helped pass in 2000, and it provides critical funding to states to uh, do recreational water quality monitoring all across the country. So it's really important that uh, we are monitoring recreational water quality so we can understand where the problems are. Make sure people know if it's safe to go surf or swim. That $10 million investment compared to the $130 billion in sort of coastal and tourism revenue seems like a really good investment. The other is that we're advocating for significant increases in funding in the EPA Clean Water State Revolving Fund. Um, There's been a lot of talk about uh, America's aging infrastructure and the need at the federal level to really make serious investments in our infrastructure. Uh, Oftentimes people are thinking about roads and bridges and trains, but our wastewater infrastructure is part of that. And, And as you described, it's ailing and it's falling apart. And so by supporting this program at $10 billion, we think we can take a significant dent out of the problem when it comes to funding you know, these really big uh, infrastructure projects to improve our wastewater system. So both of those efforts, we think that the amount of funding that we're asking for is relatively small considering the, uh, the benefits, not only to our economy, but the millions of people who love to go to the beach and expect the water to be clean. Mara, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Surfrider's Clean Water Annual Report. Sure, this is something we do every year where we track the progress of our Blue Water Task Force and Ocean Friendly Gardens programs. We also highlight some of our big campaign victories from the year and some case studies from the chapters that really illustrate how our volunteers are engaged through our programs to create awareness of local water quality problems and to solve them within their communities. So it sounds like the Clean Water Report is a great place to get an overview of Surfrider's activities. You can download that report on our website. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Current. And Mara, thank you for educating us about Surfrider's clean water work. Sure. Thank you for having me. To learn more about Surfrider's clean water work, to get involved with your local chapter or club, or join Surfrider as a member, please join us at surfrider.org.